So let's continue our discussion of particles inside rigid boxes. So let's suppose we have an electron that is traveling inside a rigid box, an infinite potential well, with a width given by L. Now we want to find the probability of finding our electron between the points 0.25L and 0.75L, assuming that the electron is in the ground state to so the quantum number n is equal to 1. So let's begin by recalling some information. So basically the wave function given by psi of x that describes our electron within a rigid box is given by this equation. So a multiplied by sine of n pi divided by l multiplied by x, where x is the position of the particle along the x-axis, n is the quantum number, in this case it's equal to 1, l is the width of that rigid box, and a is our constant, that is called the amplitude of our wave. Now, Let's begin by basically plotting on the y-axis our square of the absolute value of our wave function, which is also known as the probability density. And the x-axis is basically the position of our electron along our bottom portion of the rigid box. So we have the rigid box with the left wall, the right wall, and we have the electron bouncing back and forth between our two corners. Now the left corner is x equals 0, the right corner is x equals L, and this entire width of our box is equal to L. So we basically want to focus on the point 0.25L and 0.75L, and we want to find the probability of finding our electron within this region. Now, what exactly is the meaning behind this curve? So this curve, which basically is the probability distribution of the electron in the ground state n equals 1, represents the probability of finding our electron. So if we basically take the lower boundary to be this quantity and the upper boundary to be this quantity and we integrate, that will give us the area as shown in the following shader region and this will represent the probability of finding the electron between these two positions. So we basically want to integrate this function with respect to x beginning at this position and ending at this position. So, the shaded area is equal to the integral of the lower boundary to the upper boundary of our function, the, the square of absolute value of psi with respect to dx. So because psi is equal to this quantity, we replace psi with this and we square it to get the following result. So now we follow the same exact steps that we took in the previous lecture. So we basically want to replace x with theta. So we set theta equal to n pi divided by L multiplied by x. And now we integrate both the left and the right side. Or we take the derivative of the left side as well as the right side. So derivative of the left side is d theta. Derivative of the right side is n multiplied by pi divided by L dx. So now we take this and solve for dx, and we see that dx is equal to L divided by n pi multiplied by d theta. So the entire point of this step was basically to find what our theta is in terms of x and then rearrange and solve for x in terms of theta as well as dx in terms of theta. So we see that the shaded area is equal to, so a squared is a constant, we can bring that outside of our integral, so a squared multiplied by the, the integral, so the lower boundary becomes 0.25 pi, and the upper boundary becomes 0.75 pi. Now this becomes sine of our theta squared, so we replace this inner portion with theta, and we replace dx 
with this quantity. So L divided by N pi multiplied by D theta. So this is a constant. We can bring it outside of our integral and we get the following result. So next we apply a trig function. So we know that sine of theta squared is equal to one half of one minus cosine of two theta. So we take this sine two theta and we replace it with one minus cosine theta and we take the one half and we bring it outside of the integral because it's a constant. So now we get this result. The next step is to actually integrate. So this becomes theta and this becomes sine two theta divided by two as shown in the following region. And we basically evaluate the integral from the lower boundary to the upper boundary. Now, if we actually evaluate the integral, we get the following result. And if we calculate this, we get 2.571. Now notice A, the amplitude, is equal to the square root of 2 divided by L. So we replace A squared with 2 divided by L. So notice the L's appear on top and bottom, and so do the 2. We can, uh, we can cross out our L's and cross out the 2's, and we simply have 1 divided by pi multiplied by 2.571, and that gives us about 0.82, or equivalently, 82%. So that basically means the probability or percentage of finding our electron between these two points along the bottom portion of the rigid box is given by 82%.